Jerry at Fair Oaks. I hate to go in knowing that Harold's gone. Mm, it's pretty tough on Mr. Linwell. Maybe this will keep him from getting better as soon as he might. Well, I don't know about that, Lee. I think Mr. Linwell has made it pretty tough stuff. He'll be able to take it. Yes? Oh, come in, Captain Gardner. Thank you, Mr. Wallace. How is Mr. Linwell? He's pretty distracted, but he's giving us all the cooperation he can. Is there any news at all? No, none at all. Oh, hello, Mr. Linwell. Gee, we... we're sorry. Hello, Jerry. Lee, Captain Gardner. I know it's rather futile to say this, Mr. Linwell, but if there's anything we can do, I assure you that the entire facilities of Fair Oaks Military Academy are at your disposal. I appreciate that, Captain, but Mr. Wallace here and his men are doing everything they can. Jerry. Yes, sir? Do you think you could recall what that man looked like? The one who ran into you when you were carrying Mr. Linwell's letter to Captain Gardner? Well, I, I, gee, it all happened so quick that I didn't get a very good look at his face. All I know is that he spoke with a funny accent, like Yorga. Well, if you should see him again, do you think that you'd be able to recognize him and point him out? I, I think I could do that, sir. Oh, I'm sure we could, because when he spoke to us, he... Well, he acted sore about being bumped into. I think I got a better look at him than Jerry did, because, well, Jerry was too busy trying to get his balance. Well, what did he look like? Well, he was dark, I'm sure of that. Gray hat, dark eyes, little eyes, like he was always squinting. Mm. I'm afraid that description could fit a hundred different men. Yeah, but they wouldn't all talk with an accent. Well, that's true, son, but it's little enough to go on. Isn't it about time that your men called here, Mr. Wallace? Well, yes, but we've got to give them time, Linwell. I know exactly how you feel. Well, maybe I should have kept quiet about the whole thing and Harold wouldn't oh, be. Oh, I think you did a pretty brave thing, Linwell. Yes, and believe me, we appreciate it. Oh, I know that's a pretty weak thing to say, and whatever credit you may get for trying to expose those men who tried to bribe you, it's small pay for what's happened now. How did it happen, Mr. Linwell? Well, Harold and I were having a bite to eat in the kitchen, and, you know, we had a phone put in, and, well, it rang while we were eating. I, I didn't suspect that anything had happened, so I went into the other room and answered it. And I think it was Yorga on the line. Oh, he's got a lot of nerve. I'm afraid he is, Jerry. Uh, then what happened, Mr. Linwell? Well, there isn't much more to tell. He talked to me for at least five minutes, and when I hung up and went back to the kitchen, Harold, Harold was gone. The back door was open. Uh, Yorga held you on the line long enough to see to it that his confederates had plenty of time to get in the back door and take Harold with them. That's right, Mr. Wallace. Pretty clever. Yes, and fairly sure of themselves. Well, we're doing everything we can, but... The phone, uh... Shall, shall I answer it, Mr. Wallace, or will you? I'll take it. It's probably the report we've been waiting for. Hello? Yes, Wallace speaking. Oh, Taylor. Yes. Oh, I see. No trace, huh? All right, take plaster impressions of the tire tracks, trace them down, find out who bought the car and where the license is registered. And put out a net and tell Bradley to keep in touch with me at all times. Yes, that's right. I'll see you later. Well, it seems to be that. What's the news? Yorga has flown the coop. Gone as clean as a whistle. Tire tracks lead from his boarding house. I... When do you think you'll hear again? Well, that's hard to say, Mr. Linwell. Of course, I... I hate to be pessimistic about this, but it appears we're up against a very clever bunch. They seem to have had all their lines out well ahead of their actual time of doing the job. Everything was planned to the smallest detail. Well, aren't you... 
I mean, haven't you got men out after them? Of course, Lee. We're doing everything we can. Of course, we're up against something more than just a clever gang. Heretofore, we've worked against them and them alone. But now, well... You mean Harold, don't you? Yes, Linwell, that's what I mean. We've got to think of him. They're holding him as a threat against us. Gee, poor Harold. However, there's... Oh, the phone again. Hey, never mind, Linwell, I'll answer it. It's probably one of your men again. Yes, you're probably right. Hello? What? Oh, all right, Taylor, read it to me. Taylor's found a note, probably, from Yorga. Yes, Taylor, I'm ready. Go ahead. Mm-hmm. Oh. Very well. Uh, did you check the note for fingerprints? Uh, none on it, huh? How about the handwriting? Oh, I see. All right, Taylor. Keep on it. I'll see you later. Well? Yorga left a note. Printed. It demands that we give them 24 hours before we send a detail out after them. Or, well, you know. They've certainly taken steps to cover all their tracks. Well, what are you going to do, Wallace? Mr. Linwell, we'll have to go after them. I see. You're not going to give them 24 hours. I'm afraid we can't. But, Harold, I... We'll do everything we can. Now, there are a few things I'd like to talk over uh, with you. We'll be running along now. If there's anything we can do to help, uh, Mr. Wallace, uh, Mr. Linwell... There may be later on, Captain. Thank you. Thank you, Captain Gardner, and thanks, Jerry and Lee. Oh, that's all right, Mr. Linwell. We... Well, we're sorry about everything. I... Maybe it's partly our fault for, for finding out about the man on Woodman's Island. I mean, well, maybe we scared him. Oh, I don't think you need to worry about that, Jerry. They... They had their plans and just went through with them. Well, we'll see you later, Mr. Linwell, and we'll keep in touch with you. Thanks, Lee. Well, come on, boys. We're better out of the way. And now, Mr. Linwell, can you remember the exact dates on which these... Oh, gee, I, I feel sorry for Mr. Linwell. Isn't there something we can do, Captain Gardner? Jerry, I'm afraid the whole thing is well out of our hands and into very good ones. Mr. Wallace seems to know what he's doing. Yeah, I know that, sir, but... Well, Lee and I... We feel close to Harold, and it's kind of, well, getting on our nerves just waiting without being able to do anything at all. It, it makes me feel helpless. Well, I'm afraid we're just going to have to wait, regardless of how we feel. Hop in the wagon, boys. Thank you, sir. You were uh, going right back to the school? I guess so, sir. Uh, can we stop in at Max Place, Captain Gardner? Well, I... I rather think in view of the circumstances, and because you still have on civilian clothes, you might stop in Max for a pop or something, but don't stay too long. No, sir. Is it all right to tell Mac what's happened, Captain Gardner? Well, yes, I, I guess it is, but I tell him to keep quiet about it. Oh, Mac will, sir. You don't have to worry about him. He can keep a secret. It isn't exactly a secret, Jerry. It'll be in the newspapers, but until it is, there's no use spreading it around. We don't want the rest of the cadets alarmed. No, that, that wouldn't do any good. But we'll tell Mac to keep it under his hat. Well, here you are. I, I wouldn't stay more than half an hour, boys. Uh, may we tell the officer of the day that we've had permission, sir? Well, I'll tell him. And as soon as you leave, Max, be sure to go directly to your room. Yes, sir. There you are. Thank you, sir. We appreciate it, sir. Quite all right. Just remember, no more than half an hour. We'll remember, sir. Good night. Good, Good night, night, Captain Gardner. Gee, he's swell, isn't he? Mm, I'll say he is. Letting us go into Max this way. You know, I kind of wish Red Morrison was officer of the day. Huh? What are you talking about? <laughs> well, uh... He was the old Red Morrison, and we were out of bounds after hours. We could just walk past him without giving any excuse. We could say, Mr. Morrison, see Captain Gardner. <laughs> You're crazy. Come on, let's get in, Max. Sure. Hey, look who's in there. Where? Oh, Corporal Dent. What do you suppose he's doing in Max's place? Probably talking about Harold. Come on, let's go in. Hello, Mac. Hiya, Corporal Dent. Hello, Mac. I haven't Corporal seen you in a long time. Hello, Jerry. How are you? Hello, Jerry. Well, what are you doing out at this hour? Away from the school, I mean. And in civilian clothes. You'll catch it for that, boy. Oh, no, sir. We've got permission. Well, uh, uh, sit down and have something. Uh, what will it be, boys? Just some grape pop. Mm, same here, Matt. Yeah, all right. Well, uh, any news from, from the lad, Harold? Nothing at all, Mac. Uh, we've been talking about it. If I could get my hands on the black-hearted rascals who did it, I'd have them strung up quicker than you could snap your fingers. <laughs> it's a shame. Aye, aye, that it is. A yeah, muckle shame, and that lad not being a bra one. Uh, it's going to be oh, a Oh, talk English, McLeod, talk oh, English. go on, will you? Here, here's your pop, lads. Thanks, Mac. Here's the money. Oh, no, no, no. This one is on Mac again. You lads have had a time of it. No news, eh? 
Just that the men who took Harold left a note saying that if they were chased within 24 hours, they'd... Oh, the demon scoundrels. Just one minute I'd like to be with them. I'd show them that Corporal Dent has a bit of life left in him. Uh, me too, Corporal, me too. Oh, gee, now that we're sitting down, I'm tired, Jerry. Yeah, I am too. I just realized that we haven't sat down for a couple of hours. Oh, I, I knew lads better be getting back to school. Uh, crawl into bed early tonight and uh, get some it. rest. Yes, sir. Nothing like sleep for a rookie. Uh, yeah, I guess so. Well, thanks for the pop, Mac. Yeah, maybe we'll treat you someday, Mac. Oh, don't be thinking of that, lads. <laughs> well, good night, Mac. Good Corporal night. Dan. Good night. Good night, Jerry. Good night, Shane. Take care of yourself. Ooh. I am tired, Lee. Uh, so am I. Hey, look at this fellow without lights on his car. Hmm, better turn him on. Please! Holy smoke, Jerry, don't yell like that. What's the matter now? That man driving that car, he, he's the fellow who bumped into me and took Mr. Linwell's letter. Jerry, are you sure? Yeah, oh, golly, hey, Lee. Look, he's stopping down by Mason's drugstore. Yeah, I, I guess he didn't know us because we're in civilian clothes. Lee? Yeah? Stay here. I'm going back to Mac's place and call up Captain Gardner. We haven't got time to run over and tell him. You stay here and watch that man. Yeah, all right. He's going in the drugstore now. Yeah, if he leaves, come in and tell me. Mac, Mac, quick. I, I got to call up the school. One of the men who took Harold just went in Mason's drugstore. Oh, I got to let Captain Gardner know about it. Hey, give me the phone. Oh, Lord. Here it is, lad. Uh, what's here the number, uh, Mac? Uh, 7652. Oh, yeah. Hello. Give me 7652. Yeah. Uh, say, Jerry, where's Lee? Watching the man. Oh, golly. Well, why'd you hang up, lad? The line was busy. I'll call Mr. Linwell. Yeah. Oh, I can't do that either. He just got his phone put in, and I don't know the number. Well, the, the operator will tell you, Jerry. Oh, yeah, that's right. Hey, he's leaving. He's getting in his car. Oh. Golly, he'll get away and with nobody following him. I'll follow him. You, Mac? How? In Peter's hardway delivery truck. It's sitting right outside. I'll grab it and follow him. Not alone, you won't, McLeod. I'm a-going, too. Well, then, come on, come on. Lee, we're going, too. Oh, no, no, oh, no. we no, got no. it. We know the car and we know the man. Oh, the lad's right, McLeod. No, no, Ross, Will. There's no time to be wasting our going. Uh, come on, come on. Uh, Mr. Peters is going to be a very surprised man when he sees his truck's gone. Hey, look, the man's going. Oh, well, hurry, hurry. Uh, get in the truck, boys. Uh, get in the back. Uh, Corporal, you get up in front. We'll be here. Is the key in? Yeah, uh, uh, Peters left it in. He's still in his store. Uh, now. Uh, oh, come on, we. Uh, 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 well, for better or worse, we're starting. Aye, man. Oh, talk English, Corporal. Talk English. Thank <laughs> you.